What's up team? It is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and we are back here in the construct. And in this video, we are gonna do some rapid fire uh idea generation. This is something I've been thinking about doing for doing doing for a while, but sometimes, most of the time, a lot of the time, I get caught up in my head and I start thinking about this and that and how I'm gonna market this and edit that and do this. And then I get so tired of thinking I'm like, I'm gonna go eat and watch like 10 episodes of Orange is the New Black. I do all kinds of stupid stuff that maybe I shouldn't be doing. I, I'm entertained, I'm happy, but whatever. James Altucher, if you never heard of him, he's he's one of he's one of my mentors. Uh mentor. That's funny. It's weird when people say that. I I I study I study the things that James Altucher does. I study a lot of different people, but James Altucher, he talks about the idea machine. And the idea machine is what human beings are. We are made to generate ideas. That's it. This is, this is our whole existence. If there was a meaning of life, the meaning of life would be idea generation. So this is, this is number one. Number, number two would be, would be idea execution. Idea I just like making <coughs> making lines under stuff. So you have idea generation, idea execution, and then we have idea maintenance. Idea maintenance. M A I N T E N A N C E. I think that's right. Mate, 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 maintenance. I don't know. All right, and then we have idea improvement. All right. So if this is this this is this is this is humans right here. Think if we think of everything we ever done up until now. And possibly everything we ever everything we ever will do is because somebody had an idea and either they decided that they would make this idea reality or somebody else decided that they were going to make the idea reality which leads us to execution so there has to be an execute there has to be somebody who's like I like this idea I'm going to do it I'm going to make this idea happen and they they start it, they kick it off, right? And and there's there's different levels inside of probably all of these. But then you have somebody who has to maintain the idea, the idea executioner, the person who's like, boom, who gets the idea started. They're usually not the person who can maintain it. Like it's, it's, there there has to be. I don't know. There's maybe there's a whole different conversation. And then you have the idea improver, and that's somebody who comes in and they improve the idea. Now typically. The idea generator, the idea executioner, and the idea improver, right? The person who improves the ideas, these are all the same person, right? So, so this is typically like the founder, the chairman of the board, the CEO type of deal. So you got like Bill Gates, uh, the Steve Jobs, the Steve Wozniak, the Paul Allens, the, the, um, I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave him out, uh, Steve Ballmer, because he was at the beginning of Microsoft. And then there's hundreds of other CE, hundreds of other uh, founders out there who do this, who who go through this whole process. So you have the 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 founder would be the idea generator. So they're the machine. They create the idea, and then the idea executioner. Typically, they become the executioner. They're implementing the idea, but then they need somebody to maintain it, and that's where that's where they'll bring in like a CEO, or they'll have like a board of different people that do different things. And they will shift their focus into idea improvement. And a, a good person to think about when we think about all this stuff is Elon Musk. Elon Musk is quintessential, right? The idea generator. We don't, he started at PayPal. I don't even know how he got into PayPal or did all these things, but he helped these. I know a little bit about the story of PayPal. This is not a story about PayPal, but 
he leaves PayPal and he's like, I want to start a, a electric car company. And it, it wasn't because he wanted to sell electric cars. It's because he want he has this mission for the planet. He wants to, I don't think I've ever heard him say reduce global warming or anything like that. Basically, he wants human beings to exist as long as possible, right? And he wants the, the world to exist as long as possible. And he figures if we have this abundance of energy that's coming from the sun, enough energy to power everything, then why we need fossil fuels, right? So how do, how do I change the paradigm? How do I do that? So he sat down and he started coming up with ideas and his ideas were uh, Tesla, the electric car company, And then it was uh, SpaceX. And I don't know if th this is the order. It doesn't really matter. SpaceX is space exploration and colonization. Colonization. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Space exploration colonization. And then he has like solar solar city, I think. Solar Solar City. C I T Y. I may have that wrong. And that is a solar panel company. They just build like solar panel arrays. They put them on houses, on buildings, in big fields. Uh solar solar company. Solar power company. Solar power. Company. Now, he came up with the ideas. Kind of, sort of. Like, there were other people who had ideas for electric cars. There were other people who had ide ideas for space exploration. There were other people that had ideas for solar power. But he was like, how can I do these on a scale that makes sense? So he set out to do these, and he found other people who had good ideas. And he didn't even find... found find He's not the founder of Tesla. Tesla existed, and he had an idea for how Tesla could be ran and what they can do. And so he went in, and he joined Tesla... And again, I don't know like all the intricacies of the story, but now he's the CEO of Tesla. And he's he's building Tesla. The, 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 the point is that he had some ideas, right? He gets in, he, he starts the idea, he's executing the idea. And as things begin to grow, you have to hire other people to do to do other things. What this all boils down to is the, the idea part. Everybody has the the capacity to generate ideas now here is something here is something that's very interesting most of the ideas that we all have are probably they're probably garbage but we wouldn't know because most people don't try to implement the idea so this is one thing i learned from james altrucci he said Every day, write down 20 ideas. Now, I don't write down 20 ideas every day. I have a lot of ideas. I should write them down, but I don't. I don't know why I don't. I'm lazy. I'm, I'm, I'm whatever. Maybe, I, maybe I'm in the self-sabotage. I don't want to succeed. I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. But he says 20 ideas a day. And it's not hard to do, right, to be honest. If you walk around with a notebook and a piece of paper all day, every day, or you have some sort of app, like I use an application called Notion, and, uh, and and I'll probably have like another video on how to use that later on, but but whatever. So we've got so so idea generation is you just you just putting your idea somewhere, and so it could be an idea for anything. Oh man, what if I started a hat company, right? That's an idea, hat company, right? Uh, and then the, oh, you, what if I started like a tire company, tire tire company, right? tire company. Now we're gonna have all kinds of ideas. There's ideas all around us. We could start like a, a pair, a, a clothing company, shirts. You know, actually, I had an idea for a shirt. I had an idea for a shirt like two, two, three days ago, and I remember something else that that I learned from another another person. I learned it from Grant Cardone, and we'll I'll talk about that in a different video. But I went out. I designed this. I had the idea for this shirt a long time ago, long time ago. And something made me think about it again. And then I was like, just do the idea. It won't take that long. Just do it. <clears throat> so I designed the shirt, printed the shirt, had the shirt shipped to me yesterday. I was wearing the shirt. I don't have it on now. But I 
and I could go out and potentially sell the shirt. I even ran a Facebook ad for the shirt. I think I was running it to the wrong audience, so I didn't sell any shirts. But uh, it's a shirt. I call it the ST shirt. It's a gray shirt. It has a red silhouette of a Focus ST on it. And underneath that, it has an ST. So if you guys want an ST shirt, just put a comment somewhere. And, uh, and, and then I'll give you a link to go buy a shirt. Or maybe I just put a link to buy the shirt on a, on a website somewhere. Just leave a comment. The more comments, the better chances that I'll, I'll release a shirt. Or you can message me on Twitter. Uh, or at mention me on Twitter. Uh, the Real Casadero. And say I want a shirt. You can do the same thing on Instagram too. I want a ST shirt. But anyway. So we have all these ideas. Now we don't have to execute on all these ideas. Because some of these ideas aren't going to be stuff that we're even interested in. Like I made I made the shirt. But I'm not interested in starting a fashion company. Like that's not my number one thing. Now somebody else may be wildly, crazily interested in starting a fashion company. Now what if, what if I said, uh, you know, hat company. And then I was like, okay, what kind of hats would I sell? Right? Like I'll sell hats about coding. Coding hats. C-O-D-I-N-G. Coding hats. And I actually did this. This is a business I started while I was selling. I have I have hats. I've got this hat with the command prompt on it. I've got I've got a I've got a hat somewhere with the PowerShell symbol on it. I've got a hat with the Visual Studio symbol on it. And these are these are symbols that pro programmers will know and understand when they see them. I didn't really study how many programmers wear hats, but I could probably I don't know man but anyway so so maybe they're gonna be coding hats and I don't but I don't want to start a coding hat business now maybe somebody else out there is like I want to start a coding hat business and they don't they don't know how to to do it that's why that's why I'm here because I am going to so in these videos I'm gonna take I'm just gonna take random ideas for companies and I'm gonna go I'm gonna break down what I would do to start that company if I was really so inclined or interested in starting that company. And then you can take that information, you can run with it. So there's two goals here. One goal is to drive you guys into, into, into my training where we go over all this stuff and we, I try to help you cultivate a mindset of success, a mindset that, that, a mindset where you believe that anything is possible. The only thing that's holding you back is you. And I learned this from Ty Lopez. He talks about going to the moon. There was, before anybody went to the moon, nobody went to the moon. And then after somebody went to the moon, then everybody could go to the moon. That is the essence of, of, of all of this. So if somebody else has done it, then you can probably do it. But as we, as, as of right now, as far as we know, there's nothing harder, there's nothing harder than going to the deepest part of the ocean and to the moon, right? Well, I guess you could say going like to the, any place beyond the moon, but getting from here to the moon is hard and getting from here to the bottom of the ocean is hard and I'm, or, or not even the bottom, like the deepest part of the ocean. So those are, those are, those are the two things that are, that are really hard. Now, in comparison, everything else is easier and there's, there's, Amazing things going on out there that we wouldn't even realize. The problem is, is that we aren't even generating enough ideas. Everybody, I, be, I believe that everybody, at least once in their lifetime, depending on how long they live, right? So, I mean, you know, when I say stuff like that, I'm thinking like, I always think there's somebody out there who would disagree. Like, well, what if you only live for five minutes? Oh, you know, some goofy stuff like that. But if you live, let's say, if you, the average age, 50, 60, 70 years old, at least once in your lifetime, you had an idea that would have changed your life. And it probably would have changed the lives of 100 people around you, right? At least, a, at least, at least another 100 people in the world. I think, ideally, maybe 1,000 people. And so if you have an idea, at least once, at least one idea in your life that could change the, the, the lives of 1,000 people, you have a potential to start and operate and grow a life-changing business. Now, you may not become like Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or any of these like super like uh, uh, popular 
CEOs and founders, but you can definitely affect a thousand people in a positive way and have a thousand people at some point be like, this person right here changed the way I thought about it. If it wasn't for them, like my life would be completely, completely different. And this is like, in concern with anything, comic books, uh, uh, toys, like for some reason I'm thinking of the Super Soaker, the Super Soaker water gun. Just a war, just a water gun. Somebody may have gotten the super soaker when they were young, and as they grew up, <laughs> the experience they had with that super soaker has has guided them throughout their life. And they will look back on their life and they'll say, like, this all started with the water gun in 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 nineteen ninety five or something like that, or whenever the super soaker came out. So the first thing we want to do is we want to generate generate ideas, right? So everybody, everybody should be out there generating ideas. Become an idea machine. And just and, and, and once when you have the idea, write it down. No matter what it is. What I do is I keep uh I've I've had this for a while. It's just a text document and it's called the Spark File. And this moved from different application to different application. I started out in a program called uh called Simple Note, Simple Note. And I had one text file in there called the Spark file. So Spark file, where I just filled it with ideas. And then that moved over to Evernote. And I think I have, I put a copy in OneNote at one point, OneNote. Um, and then now I use Notion. And I use Notion because Notion has features that are different from OneNote, Evernote, and SimpleNote. If you if you want me to do a comparison on all of these and which one I think is the best, just leave a comment below. And once I see enough comments, then I'll 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 do a video. And I'll probably put in Notion a video about comparison, SimpleNote, Evernote, OneNote, in Notion. But now now I use Notion for just about everything. And I have a file in there called the, it's, it's not even a file, it's just a database. And I put something in the database and then I tag it, Spark file. So then when I go in, I can go sort by tag or I can go search by tag or just show me the stuff with this tag and I can select the Spark file and it'll bring up all of those. And I can even select the date range and all kinds of stuff. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff. So you got the, these ideas. So you want to become a, a idea machine. That is the that is the whole premise of all of this. And for those of you who don't know, my whole deal is code market sell. I spent a long time learning to code. I spent some time learning to sell. I spent some time learning to market. I spent a lot of time learning to to lead people. I spent a lot of time on personal personal development, self development, the mental mindset of success, and all kinds of other things. And that's. That's what I want to talk about in this series. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to come up with ideas, right? And and I want you to become an idea machine. I have my own ideas, of course, right? For YouTube videos and different products and services. Uh but generate some ideas. And then if you send those ideas to me like how would you how would you start a business? How would you start like a barbershop business? Barber shop. Right. Or, or how would you start like a um, uh, I did one video. It was like coffee subscription, C-O-F-F-E-E -E, subscription, sub script. I watched the video of a guy called Noah Keegan. He started a beef jerky subscription business. It was, and, and he actually started, I don't remember, I think it's called Sumo Jerky. You may be able to find the website and actually subscribe to this. But he started this off the top of his head. I, I don't know if he's like really into jerky or anything, but he was like, uh, beef jerky, subscription business. He like messaged like a bunch of people on his Facebook and he was like, hey, would you guys want to subscribe to a beef jerky subscription business? And everybody who said yes, he sent him a link that took him to a website where they could sign up for the beef jerky subscription. He didn't even have the beef jerky. So they go to the website, they sign up for the beef jerky subscription. And then he's like, okay, I got to send him some jerky. 
So he goes out and he finds the jerky and he sends him the jerky. And now if 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 you've watched any of my other stuff here recently, or you've seen any of my other recent content, or you maybe you've been through the, the 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 training, then you would know that that you don't need to make any money, right? So once somebody says, I'll buy the beef jerky, all you have to do is figure out how to get them the beef jerky without losing money. So maybe it costs you five dollars to average well. Okay, so let's say you tell 10 people on Facebook and two people come back and say, I want jerky, right? Two people say, I want jerky. Cha -ching. And one person said, one person says, I'll pay and I'll pay 20 bucks a month for some jerky, right? Now we have to figure out what is a good number for them for jerky uh, or, or I mean what is a good amount of jerky so we just we just have to figure out how much jerky can we buy and send for $20 that's it right we, we don't want to spend more than 20 bucks so we go out and we, we determine what's the weight how we have to package it and how do we send it how much is that gonna cost maybe maybe shipping is gonna cost five bucks Now we know we can go out and we can buy $15 worth of jerky. Now some people are going to be like, oh, well, Cass, what about like gas money and all these other things? You can figure all that stuff out. But you don't want to spend too much time trying to figure that out because then you won't do shit. Like this will never get done. You'll never do it. So you just got to start. So we know 20 bucks, right? So somebody sends us 20 bucks. We go out, we spend $15 on jerky, we, five, we spend $5 to send it to them. So we make $0, right? And some people are going to cast, man. Like, why do you want to work for $0? That's like the stupidest thing in the world. But here's the deal, right? If they, if they would subscribe to jerky for 20 bucks a month, what can you sell them in addition to the jerky? And, and this, this right here is a crazy, this, this is interesting. This is like one of the most interesting things I've seen. And I, I spend time out on the internet and on the interwebs studying this stuff. I'm buying sales funnels. I'm buying access to courses. I'm buying book after book after book. I'm not reading all these books because there's a lot of books. And sometimes I'm just like lazy, just like unbelievably lazy. But I try. I will be reading more, of course. But so... <laughs> So the deal is, right, is, is you've, you've, you've sold somebody some jerky, you've sold them a subscription for zero dollars, like you're break even, you're break even. They send you 20 bucks, 20 bucks comes in, 20 bucks in, and then it's 20 bucks out, 20 bucks out. You're at zero dollars. You guys get the point, $20 in, $20 out, that's not a good business, but... But once they subscribe, what do we have? We have their name. We have their phone number. Email. We have their address. Some people are going to think, oh, well, you got their credit card number too. Nah, yeah, well, no, no, you don't want to have, you don't want to keep their credit card number. You don't want to keep the credit card number with any of this stuff. You probably don't even want to keep all this stuff together. Right? There's, we use third parties for all of this, right? One company stores all of this stuff and, the, and another company stores all the other stuff. And I'll teach you about all of that stuff. So another party keeps the credit card stuff, right? But the credit card stuff, that's, that's, that's special stuff. So let's just pretend we don't even have that, right? This is, all, this is all we need. We can, once they get the jerky, we can call them on the phone and ask them what they thought about the jerky. We can send them a survey in the email, ask them what they thought about the jerky. We can send them, uh, uh, we can send them free jerky in the mail. Here's a here's the jerky you order, and here's a free sampler pack. Tell us which jerky is your favorite jerky, or whatever the hell, right? But the coolest thing we can do, and I learned this from a guy called I think his name is Trey Llewellyn. I don't know how to spell it, but Trey said Trey sells gun oil. And he said the, the most interesting thing he, when he was like thinking of like things he could upsell, like an additional thing he could sell. He could sell to he could sell, I'm looking at the time on the camera because it's going to stop recording an additional thing he could sell to a customer. And he said, just sell the exact same thing you just sold him. So if somebody if so, say, for instance, 
we we've we've got orders from one person for this twenty for this twenty dollars of jerky. We don't want to just go with this with the, with this with this one order, right? What if we can sell them two? And, and because we we know for sure the shipping service works something like this. Uh, typically, you can ship a, a heavier item, but it's not. It it's it's there's a there's a word for it. Just because so it may cost you it may cost you five dollars to ship one to ship one load of jerky to one address to each individual address, but it may cost you seven dollars to ship two jerkies, two loads of jerky to one address. All right? So, all right, I gotta stop saying right. So it may cost you seven dollars to ship two. So now when we when the customer comes here and they buy one and they say, yeah, we'll buy that, immediately after they buy it, we say, hey, we'll send you another thing of jerky for uh, instead of 20 bucks, we'll send it to you for 15. So you get two. So instead of paying twenty dollars for one, you get two for uh, 20, 35, two for thirty five dollars. And now now you get to make a profit. It's going to cost you seventeen dollars to ship. And then you're going to buy twice as much jerky. You're going to buy. So instead of instead of fifteen dollars, instead of fifteen dollars worth of jerky, you buy twenty five dollars worth of jerky. You ship it for five. I mean, you ship it for seven and then you make a three dollar profit. And that is how you would you would ship jerky. But before you even before you even do that, you need ideas. So go out right and start writing down ideas. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make videos on how to execute these ideas. If that made sense to you and it sounds interesting, you want to head over to the real and sign up for the the free masterclass where I talk about all of the stuff that we um all the stuff that makes a business successful free masterclass and then there's some other stuff and there's some offers that uh, that you can take advantage of but if you if you've ever wanted to accomplish something greater than what you've accomplished now uh, you want to start a business you want to grow a business you want to sell a product or service you're thinking of you're trying to come up with things you can do to, agenda, to generate additional income, to reach a financial goal, to reach a lifestyle goal. TheRealCasadero.com is going to help you get there along with my company, Code Market Sell. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me here. I appreciate it. Hope this was of great value. Make sure you leave comments below if that all made sense. Subscribe and then hit the notification bell so you're notified when new content comes out. We're, we're shifting. We're, we're having... Check the time here. We're having a paradigm shift. The whole idea is to bring value, right? Uh, I, I'm tired of the politics. I'm tired of I'm tired of all this other shit that's going on in the news. I'm tired of gossiping. I want to get out here and I want to I want to make some deals. I want to make some money. I want to change some lives. This is where we're gonna start. See you guys in the next video.